I'm speaking from the forest of Carreggia in Parma, Italy. I decided to come out here where it's all quiet so that I can, I can you know, concentrate on this precious message that the Lord has impressed in my heart for his people. Obviously by now we know what is happening. We are being gathered unto the Lord. The word says, they shall come from the east, they shall come from the west, the south from north, they shall come from all over to sit at that table, to have fellowship, to commune with the Father. And that is what is happening today. Glad tidings are streaming forth from Zion to bring awakening to the sons of God, to strengthen them and to keep them in the faith. Today I'm going to speak on a subject that is very common. A subject that ought to be understood the right way because it bothers on the hope of our calling as saints. It speaks about the mansions of the Father. In John chapter 14, Jesus Christ spoke about his Father's house and the many, many mansions. I think I should read them directly for those of us who don't really know the scriptures of head. They go to the book of John chapter 14 and start off from verse 1. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. You can see that these words are coming to strengthen you, to comfort you, to build you up, to strengthen you. Be not troubled. Because as men, we are troubled on either side. We worried for the for tomorrow, what to eat, what we wear. Many are scared of death. Many are worried about what has happened to their loved ones, to their relations, those who have departed the sin. Today the word comes forth saying, be not troubled. These words you are hearing are meant to strengthen you. These words you are hearing are meant to keep you in the faith, to establish you and make you unmovable throughout all eternity. Go on to verse 2, John chapter 14, verse 2. It says, In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. In my father's house there are many mansions. And of course, the, the natural mind, the carnal mind begins to wonder and imagine a physical house somewhere in the skies. It begins to wonder and imagine, you know, things according to, the, to this, this present age that we live in. Man has become so conformed to this age and, you know, he's so used to the things that are seen and the things that are perceived naturally. And at times he's unable to understand the spiritual language of God. He's unable to understand that God is spirit. 
God has no form. God is before all. And God cannot dwell in houses or temples that are made with hands, with things that are physical, inhabit eternity. Praise God. The point of the whole matter here is that Jesus Christ is saying that in God there are many abiding places. And God is reminding you of your part in Him. You have a part in God. You see, Jesus, who is the pattern son, knew where He came from. He knew He came out of the Father. And He knew He was returning to the Father. So this was His consolation and stronghold beyond the veil. He had the revelation, he had his division, he had the knowledge of his origin in God and knew that he was going back to God. He had an abiding place in God. We are speaking about Jesus the man. Jesus knew he came out of God. And in likewise manner, the Spirit is speaking gently to you, reminding you that you have a place in God. You have an abiding place in God. And He remains there waiting for your return so that you can possess your, your, that place in God. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If, I were, if it were not so, I would tell you. Console yourself with these things. You are not ab abandoned. You are not hated, you are not forsaken. You have a part in God. And he says, he is here today by the Spirit to gather you. The Spirit is here and the Spirit has just one scope, to gather you back into God, to gather you back into that place in God, so that you can once more abide in God, dwell in God. You realize God as your dwelling place. This is what the Spirit is doing today. is educating you, opening your eyes, lifting you up from the body clay and leading you into, the, into that abiding place in God. It's not a physical you know, location, rather it's something that you attain to consciously. It's rich awareness. It's knowledge that cannot be defined with words. It's knowledge that will make you walk upon the seas. It's knowledge that will keep you at in perfect peace and unmovable throughout all eternity. The Spirit is here to gather you there. That's why you hear messages like this. Don't be troubled. Don't be shaken. Don't let you know the, the various doctrines of men and religion deceive you and rob you of your place in God. Recognize this truth. And like the prodigal son, say in your heart, I go to the Father. See, for a moment the prodigal son had forgotten he had a place in the Father's house. He had a place in the Father's kingdom. He had forgotten. But when he came back to his senses, his senses and returned back to his place in the Father's house, he discovers that he has a place. He has an abiding place in God. He has an abiding place in the Father. It never ever changed. It can never be taken away from you. Just recognize this and return to the Father. Return to the Lord your God. See it. He says, where I am is where you will be. And the psalmist says, I have placed my king upon Mount Zion. 
Mount Zion is simply the spiritual height of God. It's God's dwelling place. That is the powerhouse of creation. Everything is sustained. Everything is maintained. Everything is created right from that powerhouse upon Mount Zion. That is God's dwelling place. See, that is also referred to as the right hand of God. It's the place of all power and all glory. It is the place, the place of pleasures. Mount Zion, the joy of the whole earth. Mount Zion, where the, the heavenly Jerusalem is situated. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If, I, if it were not so, I would tell you. You are that city, you are that house set upon the hill. It speaks about the heights of Zion. And God is gathering his people to that place right now. All you need to do is to allow the guiding voice of the Spirit lead you into that place. Recognize the mystery of the Father's house and be gathered back into it obediently by conforming yourself to Christ. Praise God. And you know, strange enough, later on, the disciples ask Jesus to show them the Father. Go quickly to verse 8, John chapter 14, verse 8. Philip said unto me, or unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and he sufficed us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me? Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Now let's stop here, let's not go too far. I just wanted to point out to you that Jesus Christ declares emphatically that the Father is in him and he is in the Father. He's trying to reveal to us that in reality he is the house of God. He is the temple of God. He is the house of God. He is the temple of God. You see, but this knowledge is not complete without recognizing the fact that you are an integral part of the Lord. You are one body with the Lord. See, the Lord Jesus Christ himself represents a celestial body. He represents a body that has been before time. And that body is a multi-membered body. And that multi-membered body, you have a part in it. That is your dwelling place. You have a part in that body, which we call the body of Christ. This is the body that is being revealed to mankind today. Praise God, a body in the heavens. He has made known to us his goodwill, which is to gather all men, all, all things in heaven and on earth, is to gather everything into him, into Christ. Because that is the end. That is your dwelling place. See, this is the secret place of God. This is the place of security. So that you can once more have your being in God, live in God, walk in God. Praise God. This is what the whole gospel is all about. Gathering every man back into his place in God. 
into God's temple, gathering every man into Christ. Because in Christ dwelleth the fullness of God. Everything of the Father, everything of God is embedded in that one body we call Christ. That is the house of God. Where the body is is where you find God. God is not found anywhere else but in the body, which is that celestial body we call, we call Christ. That is the body of God. And he says, you have a part in it. This is your dwelling place. This is your mansion, your abiding place. In God. Praise God. Let the Spirit lift you up out of the mary clay. Recognize this incorruptible, invisible body that has been before time. Recognize it and ascend back into it. Ascend back to Mount Zion. Let the counsel of the Lord lead you through the night season to relocate your place in God. This is the good will of the Father for every man today. God bless you.